Coming up next on WBHS 9 News. The widow of the first Brentwood policeman killed in the line of duty talks about her loss and the community's loss. From waiters to CEOs, millions of Americans lost their jobs during COVID. And even the happiest place on earth wasn't immune to the layoffs. And it's the biggest comeback of all. For a coach many thought might never step on the court again, the news starts now. Hello, Brownwood High School. I'm Ben Mahaffey. And I'm Oliver Brogdon. Here's what's making news. It's an event that rocked the city of Brentwood and the entire community. On June 18th, Brentwood police officer Destin Legazo was killed in a head-on collision by a drunk driver. Channel 9's Ethan Meadows talks with Legazo's widow, chief, and fellow officers. The city of Brentwood lost a valued member of its community. Officer Destin Legazo was killed in an incident involving an intoxicated driver on Franklin Road. The Brentwood community is still recovering from the loss of Officer Legeza. His best friend and wife, Heather Legeza, mourns this loss more than any other. I'm doing okay. It's hard. Uh, I definitely, I miss Dustin every day. I think about him every day. I have a great group of friends and family that have surrounded me and just brought me in, and that's made it a lot easier. And the Brentwood Police Department has done so much for me. I can't, I can't thank them enough in this community, and the support I've been given is amazing. Uh, but I definitely, it's definitely hard. I miss my best friend. The incident that took place on June 18th, 2020 left the entirety of the Brentwood Police Force devastated. Among those affected by this tragedy is Police Chief Jeff Hughes. I had the privilege of hiring Destin. Um, he had worked for us approximately four years, and so he was one of the first uh, several officers that I had the opportunity to hire as chief of police. I didn't know him, but I knew his father, who is a lieutenant at the Franklin Police Department. And I respected him as a police officer. And, and so I knew that Destin probably uh, had the heart uh, and had the, uh, had the desire to be a public servant. That's the kind of guy that he turned out to be in serving for the Brentwood Police Department. He received Officer of the Year uh, on one occasion. Uh, he was recognized for numerous acts. So in his short time, he made an impact. Despite working opposite shifts, Officer Leguiza's good deeds still left a positive impact on the chief. He brought value to the organization. His personality, his competency, they were what we look for in a police officer. As a police chief, you know that there is always a possibility uh, that this could happen, but it's hard to imagine it ever happening to you in your department. Uh, lo and behold, on June the 18th of 2020, our worst fears were realized. When I got the call, and, and this is the kind of call that you never want to get, and when I realized that Destin had passed, your world is changed forever. We're kind of like a family, and I feel Feel, I feel kind of somewhat of a parental role. It changes you. It changes your organization forever. It's not, uh, it's not a, it's, there's never a point that we'll go back to the way we were before that because now we have experienced losing an officer in the line of duty. This coming May, we plan to make a trip to Police Week in Washington, D.C. Destin's name will be unveiled on the wall at the, at the police memorial. Uh, that's part of the healing process. Uh, but as we approach June of 2021, that anniversary date, I think will once again stir up our emotions and, and uh, just make us think back on, you know, how special and, and important Destin was. You know, I always encourage people to give back, support their local communities. The support I've been given has just been overwhelming in the best way. I just couldn't thank um, the people that have supported me enough. It's just been, it's been amazing. Though he is gone, he is not forgotten. Officer Leguiza's service to the city of Brentwood will always be remembered. Ethan Meadows, WBHS 9 News. The woman accused of driving the car that hit Officer Leguiza has been indicted. A Williamson County grand jury formally charged Ashley Kroos with vehicular homicide, aggravated assault, 
reckless endangerment, and drunk driving. Investigators say the Thompson Station woman was on the wrong side of the road when she hit Legace's patrol car head-on. Her blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. Kroos is free on a $750,000 bond. Officer Destin Legaza won't be able to work at the new police headquarters Brentwood is building, but he will be remembered there. Construction on the new building started earlier this year. It's located near Tower Park and the Rec Center. City leaders have approved the funding for a memorial wall that will look something like this. The concrete wall will be about four feet tall and contain the names of officers killed in the line of duty, as well as police retirees who worked for the city at least for 20 years. The new headquarters is expected to open in the spring. From the death of a loved one to a friend or parent losing their job, we've all been affected by COVID over the past nine months. But imagine living in the Nashville projects where the rate of infection and the unemployment rate are even higher. We've all heard about the struggles hospitals and small businesses have been going through. But lower income communities, such as the Nashville housing projects, have had it even rougher. Edge Hill resident and community leader, Brittany, who didn't want to give up her last name, has lived here for three years. She hopes she can give back and help break the cycle. I'm a mother, I have six kids. I have literally been through everything. I've literally been through everything. I've experienced, I've seen death. I used to sell drugs for 15 years. Um, like I've been out here for real, for real with survival modes. Brittany has experienced a lot in her lifetime, but nothing quite like COVID-19. Metro schools are closed, leaving single mothers like Brittany in a tough situation as they have to choose between working a job and caring for their children. We need our kids in school. We they're just contained. They're going crazy. I have a 12-year-old son that um, he's been in trouble, never been in trouble in his life. He's uh, a scholar in football and basketball, and now he's a felon because he has been contained and bored and not able to do anything. And he's done um, tried to experience life on another side, and now my baby is a felon at 12 years old. And this has all started taking place when our schools have stopped. We can't send our kids to school. We can't, we are just bounded in one spot. Like nobody is able to be in one spot at one time for a long time. Many throughout the pandemic have struggled to afford necessities, such as food, toilet paper, Clorox wipes, or even paying their rent. The biggest impact is jobs and childcare. We need more, like we need help, like with jobs and childcare and things like that. Um, as far as, you know, our barriers is normal, regular barriers because we ain't a low income place or whatever. And we need things fixed. You know, we ha we're living in uh, bad conditions during COVID. Like, it's no way. We we're not able to survive right now. We don't have money. We don't have people that want to come out and see no help because everybody's contained right now. And it's kind of, you know, it's iffy. It's not just as far as like, we can just come together. Like it's, it's separating people even more. In a time of great uncertainty, those in low-income housing need all the help they can get. Colin Kadoof, WBHS 9 News. Things are not so happy at the happiest place on earth. Because of the pandemic, Disney has had to lay off almost 30,000 workers. And as Robin Neiman reports, it's not just those at Disney theme parks losing their jobs. The epic blockbuster Gladiator won five Academy Awards in 2000, including Best Picture. The music in the film was produced in part by Todd Holm, who worked for Disney. Holm also worked on other well-known films such as Saving Private Ryan, Catch Me If You Can, Almost Famous, and Ron Burgundy. I have been a music uh, executive producer and line producer of music for 30 years. I work in the film business for about 15 years with Disney and DreamWorks. And the last 10 years, I've been an executive music producer for Disney Imagineering. While he hasn't gotten the virus, COVID-19 has had a huge impact on Todd Holmes' life. He is one of 28,000 Disney employees worldwide who've lost their jobs. And when COVID happened this year, that just tightened things down on uh, everyone's front. And all the people that I work with in LA now are uh, sort of in a holding pattern. Some of them are back at their job, but business is far from as usual. Holm has worked in Rome, London, and Hollywood. He moved to Nashville two years ago. Losing his job hit him hard. It gave me a life. It was, uh, it was nonstop fun for 30 years. And it had its pains too, but uh, I grew up in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, and I would have been deemed a success had I become a taxi driver. 
And so to come and work in Hollywood with Spielberg and Hanks and all guys like that on a hundred and some movies and then at theme parks having fun for a profession for 10 years, it's been an amazing thing. Even though he lost his dream job, he plans to return to his work in the future. Only when things get really humping again will they get around to thinking about, hey, where's that guy that used to live here? And then he moved to the hinterlands. Robin Neiman, WBHS 9 News. Freshman English instructor Athena Phillips just released her third children's book, Carnivore Goes to Camp. Carnivore is a dinosaur who encourages young readers to focus on moral topics, such as being responsible and helpful, as well as how to share. Uh, becoming a published children's author has always been a major dream of mine. Um, writing is one of my pastimes and one of my favorite things to do. And um, I've been inspired by many other female authors um, to pursue this um, opportunity. And I love what I've been able to come up with. Carnivore Goes to Camp, as well as Philip's other two books, are available on Amazon, as well as her website, herbivore.com. Another school year, another building project for Brentwood High. The front of the school has been under construction since June as crews work on a new entranceway and offices. Phase one began four years ago when the BPAC was built, followed by the practice football field being replaced by a parking lot, then the STEM building. The county wants to expand BHS so it can accommodate 2,200 students. It should be completed next June. So it's, it started construction this June, and, it, and it's going to take one year to complete, and so we should be ready to go and be back in it during the 21-22 uh, school year. The cost of the latest project, just over $3.5 million. Husband, father, pilot, and war hero. They all describe Major Troy Gilbert, who was killed in combat in Iraq. Ashlyn Witt has the emotional story of the woman keeping Gilbert's memory alive. Ginger Gilbert Ravella fondly remembers her late husband, Iraq war hero Troy Gilbert. As a major in the Air Force, he flew F-16 fighter jets. The year before he deployed to Iraq, uh, he was an instructor pilot, so he was teaching younger pilots how to fly the F-16. We were in Arizona, and he was also working for President Bush. He was a, a pilot assigned to Air Force One, President Bush's plane. While serving in Iraq, Troy was caught in crossfire. After an American helicopter was shot down, cavalry units were on their way to rescue them, but ran into Iraqi forces. On his first pass, Troy was able to take out an enemy truck, but unfortunately was not successful on his second pass. He was taking enemy fire, and um, he was just a little bit lower than he was on the first pass, and his tail of the jet clipped the ground, and so he was really... Um, really only feet away from living. Even though Troy wasn't able to bring his plane up, he saved the lives of more than 60 soldiers. He deployed in September of 2006. Tragically, three months in, uh, I got a knock at the front door on a Monday morning, and um, they told me that Troy and his jet had gone down um, west of Baghdad in a combat mission. Troy's family was devastated by their loss, but found ways to honor him. So it was, you know, a long road <laughs> for our family, and we loved the military. I loved, I loved being a pilot's wife. Um, it was just a great privilege and honor, and it, it, it taught me so much about myself um, to be with most amazing people in the world, really, are military families. When Ginger was raising money for a charity that helps the children of fallen soldiers, country singer Lee Bryce attended and sang his song, I Drive Your Truck. I just looked at him and said, Lee, wow, you know, I love that song, the power of music and to speak to our deepest um, feelings uh, is, is, it's a beautiful thing, but I said that song is so hard for me because I just, you know, I, I wish so much that, um, that we still had Troy's truck to drive because the song is about a, you know, a father who, who drives his son's truck after he's killed in combat. A year later, Ginger and her family were invited to the ACM Party for a Cause concert to accept a check towards one of her charities. However, her current husband and Lee Bryce surprised her with Troy's truck. I think that he's, you know, going to bring one of those big checks and we're going to take a picture and that's going to be it. And uh, all of a sudden he starts telling me, you know, I've never forgotten about our conversation last summer uh, that you wish that you had Troy's truck back. And I just wanted you to know that uh, we found it. Although their family had lost Troy, a piece of him remained within the truck. Loss has changed me for sure. Um, 
I think that there's probably a part of me, you know, that will always be a little bit sad <laughs> um, because I, I miss, um, I miss, you know, my fighter pilot, Troy. Ginger continues to honor Troy's memory by working tirelessly to serve others, notably other widows. She is now an international speaker and wrote a book called Hope Found with her current husband and retired colonel, Jim Ravella. I wanted to serve um, kind of in honor of Troy and the way that he served so selflessly other people and um, and of course um, the people that I wanted to help were the people that I knew and loved was military families and especially military widows. Troy Gilbert reminds us what it means to be a patriot. He has inspired many, no one more than his wife Ginger, to lead a dedicated life. Ashlyn Witt, WBHS 9. What a great story. Yes it was. Very emotional. After the break, cooking up careers for Nashville's homeless community. And after that, the emotional return of a coach who suffered stroke just four weeks ago. You're watching WVHS 9 News. Hey guys, I'm Holland Powers, the student body president. And I'm Luke Walters, the senior class president. And we want to show you a few things PTO has done to make a difference in our school. Follow me. One thing we love about Rowan High School is chemistry. I love chemistry too. With the recent addition of the STEM building, PTO funding has allowed us to purchase lab equipment to uh, enhance our scientific experience in the learning classroom. <coughs> oh, sorry. We just got distracted by having so much fun using these whiteboards given to us by PTO. I used to eat lunch on the dirty old ground, but thanks to PTO, we've got these new tables. And now I eat lunch comfortably with my friends. Those are just a few things PTO has done for our school. Make sure to donate so they can do more amazing things. See you later, Brentwood. Hi, my name is Kristen Merrill, and I am serving as the PTO president this year. While the beginning of our school year may look and feel a bit different, the PTO is committed, as always, to making it the very best for our students, teachers, and parents. We want to reassure you that the PTO is working to make this year important, to make this year memorable, and to make this year count. We're counting on our parents to help us by donating to the PTO and volunteering where you can. You can find all the information on the PTO website. Please visit it to donate and learn how to get connected. Thank you for supporting the Brentwood High School students and faculty with your generous donation as we partner together to make a difference. Homeless people struggle with getting jobs and getting back on their feet. The cookery is a business that gives homeless people a chance at a new life using cooking. In 2013, Brett Swain founded The Cookery in Nashville, a restaurant that serves Australian food and a purpose. That purpose is to help the homeless find jobs in the restaurant industry. So the idea of the cookery was to take all the skill sets that I'd been given and others around me who were smarter than me, to pour into a house that we could train up these men in the art of culinary. Right now, three men are learning how to prepare and cook food. Since the cookery opened seven years ago, it's seen 30 go through the program. We were allowing a space for God to work on the minds and the lives and the wreckages and the pains the mistrust, the hurts, and the damage for these guys. As they're studying and using their hands, he was working on their lives, hearts, and minds. Swain understands what these men are going through, as he was once homeless himself. Before co-founding the cookery, I was homeless. The basic survival stuff can take most of your day. And to go through that experience and not directly feel the presence of God with me in that sense, um, it, it, it didn't create a, a, a zone of, of um, numbness. I got to feel what that felt like. And I think that's very, very important. If you're called to, to help someone, um, it's one thing to be able to, to speak from a high and lofty place. It's another to be in that hole alongside them. The cookery has made a substantial impact through the homeless community, even during the ongoing pandemic. And while many restaurants had to close during the pandemic, the cookery has been able to remain open. Because it was not that because we made a great salad that we've remained open. It's because we kept going out to the poor. We kept investing in God's work and in one another. And um, God saw fit to bless us and keep us open. So COVID really affected the business, but it also strengthened our ministry. Brett Swain sees a bright future for the men going through the program. Sam Volpentesta, WBHS 9 News. In sports, no surprise that Brentwood won its eighth straight volleyball state championship. 
What was surprising was who was back on the sideline, head coach Barbara Campbell. The Hall of Fame coach was hospitalized four weeks ago after suffering a stroke. Assistants Kathy Cram and Angie Noble kept the team focused and helped them get to the finals. But just moments before the Lady Bruins took the court against Siegel, Campbell walked into the gym and sat down on the bench. It was a huge surprise to her players and to Coach Campbell. I didn't even know I was coming until about an hour before the match. And I just kind of, I just wanted to sneak in and get my place on the bench and be close to them. They gave me a warm welcome. They, it was, it was very special. Because we, you know, you just didn't know when we were all gonna see each other again. And um, I wanted to see him play so bad. Um, and they certainly didn't let me down. I thought they played just an incredible match tonight. BHS defeated Siegel three to nothing. Senior Shea Eggleston was named tournament MVP. So how did the Lady Bruins make it to the finals? Harrison McConnell is in the WBHS 9 Sports Center with the answer. How did they make it? Well, they made it pretty easily. The Lady Bruins beat Collierville, Cookville, and Houston to make it to the championship game, losing only one match in the process. In the finals, they swept Siegel to take home another state title. Senior Shea Eggleston was tournament MVP. It means a lot. I mean, this year has definitely been such a crazy year with the COVID stuff going on and then Coach Campbell. It's definitely been a really chaotic year, but I think that um, it also allowed us to just bring come together a lot more and never take any of our games for granted. And so I think that this year, honestly, it just means more. The volleyball team finished 37-3 on the year. The girls' cross-country team also brought home a state title. Caitlin Vanderkolk led the Lady Bruins with a third-place finish. Her brother Kevin finished second on the boys' side. The football team finished one step short of top honors. The Bruins made it to the championship game with playoff wins over Cane Ridge, Independence, and Franklin. There, they ran into the top team in the state, undefeated Oakland. They lost 56-33. Junior tight end Aaron Walton cut three touchdown passes. I'm extremely, extremely proud of all the seniors, coaches. They're just great leaders and couldn't ask for a better group of guys. Oh man, just just uh, uh, second time in school history that we made it here. I mean, I think it tells you enough. All the adversity and the injuries, just all the things that we overcome, um, phenomenal. They kept playing hard. They kept believing in us. Kept giving us, uh, kept giving us chances. And we had what a miraculous road, man. What a great journey. So it's gonna be fun when this is over to reflect on the season and what all went on. And, uh, very very proud of them. Love each and every one of them. BHS finished this year with an 11-4 record. The Bruins expect another deep playoff run next year with the return of Walton and several other skilled players. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Harrison. For 15 years, a local business has helped Brentwood High. Each year, Santa's Trees next to the Methodist Church has donated $5,000 to the school. Have you gotten your tree yet? We have. My parents put it up before Thanksgiving. Still to come, an unusual way to relieve stress. And after that, can you spell asynchronous? We will put you and Brentwood students to the test.
song, let's sing a song. What can we sing? South Paul Board Company custom makes each board by hand, perfect for anyone. Built with sturdy wheels and walnut. Take your adventure to the next level with South Paw Board Company. Tom Brady may be the GOAT, the greatest of all time, but he's got nothing on these kids. Rad Abdul Rob introduces us to some GOATs that are helping relieve stress. Yoga is a class all about meditation and finding peace. But now, some yoga instructors are adding goats into the mix. At Goat Yoga Nashville, normally peaceful yoga classes are shaken up by Nigerian dwarf goats jumping all over you. It first started in about four years ago in Oregon, and they were really large goats, maybe like 60 to 100 pounds, and they had horns and they just would walk around class. It was a super zen type yoga class. And we started, we're about the third in the nation to start about three and a half years ago. And so we started the whole jumping off the backs, um, running along people's while they're playing yoga, more of a circus type thing than just a Zen yoga class. And it's been a hit. Most of the goats in the yoga class range anywhere from two months old to two years old. While goats are cute, there are other reasons why they are used in yoga classes as well. Animals are therapeutic. Uh, so I'm guessing that's one of the reasons why, other than people like goats, uh, for whatever reason, people just adore goats. And so it's a great thing to be around a farm animal that most people don't get to interaction with. And they're really loving animals as well. And so the therapy that goes along with uh, the exercising, the laughing, and the, just the being around the animals, all those chemicals in our brain that help us feel um, peace and joy and all that stuff. I mean, that's really why we do it. Goat yoga usually meets four to five times a week with classes being held on Fridays and Saturdays. People can also schedule private yoga classes for birthdays or anything else like that any day of the week except Sunday. Classes are $25 per person and you can also buy t-shirts for 20. During the start of COVID, they were forced to shut down, but now they can finally reopen. We were shut down for about three or four months initially uh, until they opened it up. Um, I believe in phase two, we were allowed to open up and uh, we have reduced our class sizes. Usually our class sizes were about 50 people per class. Now we're down to, uh, usually it's anywhere, our max is about 25. When they aren't stepping on people's backs, the goats hang out in a barn with their guardian dog and a couple of Labradors to make sure they're safe so they can participate in goat yoga for many years to come. Ride a ball, Rob, WBHS 9. Some love them, some hate them. Either way, more asynchronous learning days are in our future. Also known as Flex Fridays, asynchronous days allow students to work from home and gives teachers a chance to catch up. All Williamson County schools will observe Flex Fridays next semester on January 15th and 29th, February 5th and 26th, as well as March 12th and 26th. So now that we all know what asynchronous days are and when we will observe them, the big question is, how do you spell asynchronous? Spell asynchronous. What? A asynchronous. A S Y N C R O N I S. Asynchronous? Oh, okay. A S Y C H A N E R I A S Y N C H R O N O U S. Can you spell asynchronous? No. A S Y C <laughs> R I C E S. <laughs> the word. Asynchronous. No, I can't do it. I have no clue. <laughs> A C E. Oh, I don't know. Asynchronous. A S Y N C H R O N O U S. Asynchronous. Did you know how to spell it? Nope, not even going to try. Thank you for joining us for this holiday special of WBHS9. Hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.